I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret today. I'm gonna let you peek into a world that not a lot of people see. It's a world of a girl without any makeup on. So here's the thing. I get a lot of questions all the time. What's that for? Why do you need this? Why do you do that? So I decided today that I'm only going to do half of my face. And we're going to do everything. Contour, blush, primer, full foundation, concealer on half of our face. So that you can see the magic that goes into the makeup and how certain products can make certain things disappear. I get told a lot, you have perfect flawless skin and that is so not the case. I have really bad combination, sensitive to everything, break out if you look at it wrong skin. So I struggle a lot with trying to figure out what the best products are for me and I'm saying magic because obviously it's product, it's not really like boom shikalaka, it's gone. That would be nice, but that's not how it works. And then at the end of the video, I'll have a little bit of bonus of my uh, Grandma Gaga, which is my grandma, which is where I'm living now. This, as you can see, is a completely different setting. I'm in the bathroom of my grandmother's house, my bathroom for the time being. And um, so we're going to do a little bit of that. That did not go quite like I wanted it to. It turned more into like a crazy glitter couture hot mess clown but <laughs> she's still a big sport and yeah okay so I can't can't stand looking at myself in the here anymore without any makeup on so we're gonna go ahead and get started on my half face okay I'm gonna start off with makeup primer this is the Arbonne makeup primer which you can get from any Arbonne salesperson that you know in your area so anyway we just apply it on half our face. Next up is foundation. I'm going to use the Pure Makeup from Maybelline. Next up, I'm going to apply my concealer. This is the MAC Select Cover Up Concealer. taking everything I have not to go ahead and get these little things on the other side but I won't and I tend to blend it in with the same sponge that I used to apply my foundation just because it already has that same color my color on it so I think it helps to blend more some people put on concealer first and then foundation over it just depends on your routine what you want to do okay now I'm gonna put on my powder this is just translucent powder um, and I've got glitter on it that I've painted on it. I don't know why I just decided to do that. And then some powders, if you're using, this one's just a translucent, but if you're using a powder that has color, it'll also give you more coverage. And this face right here is usually the one that you see when I start videos. I go ahead and apply my foundation to cover up any of these flaws. Next up, I'm going to contour. I'm going to take this bronzer by Arbonne and I'll start right along my cheekbone right here, right underneath in the hollow part of my cheek. I should say under my cheekbone, not on. Just going to drag that in. And it helps to create a shadow here which gives you a more sleek shape to your face. I don't contour in day to day life. Um, and I don't contour a lot in videos either, but some people swear by it. I'm just giving you the whole shebang here. And then I also bring it up to my temple and then a little bit around the hairline just to decrease that and make sure it all blends in. And then I pull just a little bit along the jaw. Next up is blush. I'm going to use my staple blush, which is Max Peachy Keen. As you can see, it probably needs a new one. And then I sweep that right above the bronzer. Moonlight Mile highlight along the top of my cheekbone. Okay, next up is going to be eye primer, which I'm going to use the Paint Chili Paint Pot from MAC. 
and that's to make it stay on all day. It also adheres if you have pigments, loose loose um, eyeshadow, it adheres them to your eye. And it also, like the Paint Early Paint Pot one, helps to really um, create a clean canvas. Like, I'm, I have a little bit of red in my skin, so it masks the red a little bit. I like to use the Peach Glow Blush from the Lauren Luke palette. It's too light to be a blush for me, um, so I, I like it as an, an all-over color. So all over means just that. It's going to go all over the lid, sometimes all over the whole entire eyelid. I just put it above my, um, on top of my eyeball itself in the lid space right here. My contour today I'm going to use Wedge from MAC. And that goes right in the crease of your eye. Now there are definitely other ways to apply contour. Um, you can go all the way down, you can just come in the outer corner, you can really create a sharp line here, you can create a diffused line. That's just going to depend on which kind of look you're going for. You'll have to decide how you want to do that. And also you can apply more than one contour color. Like today, I'm going to apply the wedge first all over here. You can see with this brush it's getting that whole area right there along the, um, right below the brow space. In this case, I'm going to use Cranberry. And then finally, our highlight, I'm going to use Shroom. And that's going right below my brow. Let's highlight that. And then I also apply in the inner corner and then blend into my other colors. Alright, let's do some liner. I'm going to use the Pin Ultimate from MAC since it's a liquid liner and people tend to have problems with liquid. My suggestion would be to get one of these rather than the pen, rather than the traditional kind of brush. The pen works more like a felt tip marker, which is a lot easier to control because you're used to holding, you know, a marker or a pencil to write with this way it's the same sort of thing. So I start in the middle and I make short strokes and then I'll start from the inner corner and make one long stroke that way I get more of a... Um, my, I tend to make my lines thicker on the outside and then thinner on the inside just to bring the shape of the eye out and it's easier to control that way instead of just starting from the middle because you might, you might not be that um, stable if you'll take your fingers I usually rest my hand on, on my chin and then hold my finger to the side. That way it gives me stability so I'm not shaky. For a cat eye, Instead of flicking out, I usually will start from the point that I want it to stop and then bring it back in. So I follow this line and then just bring it out. And sometimes you have to just pull out, so that's what she said. Now if you want to pull it down here, you can. I'm not going to. I'm going to culvert it next, which is another big thing that people ask about. The cool rimming is the waterline, which is this area right here. And it's also the top if you're going to do complete rim. Otherwise, you can just do the bottom or you can just do the top and do a complete cold rim by the top and the bottom. It looks kind of funky, don't freak out, but yeah. So to do the cold rim here, you can either kind of push a little bit to bring that little area forward, or you can pull down, which some people do, or you can just kind of blink into it. I do a little mixture of all three. The dreaded eyelash curler. Now my eyelashes tend to curl naturally whenever I put mascara on, so I'm lucky that way. But a lot of women aren't, so we're going to go and do this too. Put it on your eye. Don't get into your eyeball, but you put it all the way down to close to the base and then 
I curl twice and then you're supposed to come up so I, I curl twice and then pull up it's hard to do right here especially because I have a fan blowing in my eye I use Great Lash by Maybelline a lot it's a really good mascara that's probably the cheapest out there and the best for a drugstore brand so I tilt back start from the roots and wiggle up so that you get most of the color at the bottom which is going to volumize them and then pulling up will help to lengthen next is going to be eyebrows eyebrows are a huge difference I hope you guys really take notice of this once my eyebrows are do done how much of a difference it is I tend to use this palette here it's a matte Christmas palette um, I think it was this year, maybe it was last year, but it just has this matte brown here in the corner, which I've actually got water on, which is why it looks like that. So I put it on a brush like this. This is a Smashbox brow brush. It's a coarse bristle brush, and then I start from the center or the outer edge, whichever, to apply the most color in short strokes, and then I'll finish by blending it out a little bit into the farther hairs. You don't want to really draw it in harshly right there because then it's going to look not natural because your hair doesn't start really dark right there. Just follow the shape and then when I get to the arch then I'll pull it just straight down for that. Try to make it thinner at the end how your eyebrows naturally taper. See how much of a huge difference one eyebrow is? It's all in the shading. Okay, I'm going to do a red lip now so I can show you all the steps for that. Liner, lipstick, lipstick and gloss. So liner here, this is the, what is it, cherry lip pencil from MAC. It's really good for any of the reds. And for um, any kind of really darker color lips, lipstick, I always recommend the liner just so it helps to last all day because it, it provides like a primer on the bottom for the lip color to stick to. And then also, if it does wear off, you know you still have color on because you have your liner underneath. Which is why my next thing would be to recommend never just line like this one. Go in and fill in afterwards. That way you know you always have color on. Alright, next is going to be our color. This is the L'Oreal True Red. And then just a gloss over the top, and I don't put it on the whole thing, I usually just put it towards the center, which gives the illusion of a more pouty lip. Okay, and that's it. This is the magic of makeup with, without.